Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about curvature or kappa. Um, and specifically, we're going to talk about how the formulas relate to each other. Um, so curvature is just like how fast or how curvy a curve really is. Um, so there's a bunch of things that you need to know going into this. So let's cover those and then uh, we'll get on with it. So you need to know, first thing, uh, t is the unit tangent vector. So it's a function typically of uh, little t, or time usually. And we can find that by doing uh, r prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t. So that's something that we're going to come back to and use a couple times. Because it's a unit vector, I'm going to write this down, the magnitude of t is equal to 1, and that is a constant. And that's going to be important for uh, one of the things we're going to do. In fact, it kind of leads to the next thing, which is that t dot t prime is equal to 0. And the reason that that is true is because of number 2, because the magnitude of t is a constant. Um, there's a theorem, and you can prove that. But any time that the magnitude of a vector is constant, then its tangent vector will be uh, orthogonal to its radius vector. And so that means that the angle between t and t prime is pi over 2 because they're orthogonal. Um, OK, so the next thing that we need to this is just a lot of stuff that we're going to use. So this should all be background info. I just want to like summarize it for you. Uh, OK, so the next thing is uh, s, arc length, is the integral from a, some arbitrary starting point, to t of the magnitude of r prime of u du, where u is just a dummy variable. Specifically for what we're going to do, we need to know by the second fundamental theorem that ds dt, the rate of change of arc length with respect to time, is just the magnitude of r prime of t, which is kind of the speed or the, well, really the speed. Um, and so the next thing that we need to know is, this one's kind of obscure. I, it You've maybe used it a lot, but uh, the magnitude of a cross b so the magnitude of the cross product of two vectors is equal to the product of the magnitudes times the sine of the angle between them. Um, and if you're like looking at the things I said you need to know, uh, number four is probably going to be relevant to that. And number two is probably going to be relevant to that, right? Because we have a magnitude uh, and we have an angle between them. All right. So in a perfect ideal world, curvature would be the rate of change of the unit tangent vector with respect to arc length. The problem with that, uh, if you've tried to find arc length parameterizations, you know that those are not uh, super easy to find. So what we want to do, come up with a way to uh, use this formula without needing explicitly an arc length parameterization. And we're definitely going to be able to do that. So now let's get started. So that's all prerequisite knowledge. Here we go. So we are given that curvature is the magnitude of uh, dt ds, right? The rate of change of the unit tangent vector with respect to arc length. Unfortunately, usually we have t as a function of t and not as a function of arc length. Um, and so what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at uh, dt dt, which it's usually a function of. Um, and let's think about the chain rule. So to end up with uh, dt dt, where one of those is a vector and the other one is uh, the parameter. Uh, what if we just did uh, dt ds times ds dt? That's exactly how the chain rule works. Um, and so we're definitely allowed to do that. So the chain rule tells us that uh, dt dt, or just t prime to keep it simple, um, is equal to dt ds times ds dt. All right, well, I can rearrange that. So dt ds is uh, t prime divided by ds dt. And if we throw some magnitudes around these things, so ds dt is the magnitude of r prime. So that's just positive, And uh, it's a scalar in this case. So we have this, so the magnitude of t prime over uh, the magnitude of r prime. Uh, so let's just, I'm going to pop up the things we needed to know that will help with this part. 
So we need to know if t was equal to r prime of t over the magnitude of r prime of t, which means uh, dt dt is t prime, and also ds dt is the magnitude of r prime. So this, by substitution, we know that um, the curvature as a function of t can be expressed as t prime over the magnitude of r prime. That's another formula. So uh, this is really useful if you've been doing a lot of calculations and you just have t prime laying around and you have r prime laying around. That's really the only time I would use this version. Um, but it's still, it, it's a thing. Uh, so let's, and we need it to continue moving on. So that's kind of the key thing. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this formula as a given and do something else. So this is the formula we just came up with. Uh, so there were a bunch of things that we needed to know, right? Which I kind of like shrunk down a little bit. Uh, from number one, I can rearrange that and I can say that r prime of t is the magnitude of r prime of t times t, which is super useful. Uh, I'm gonna do two things at this point. So the first one, I'm just gonna let the magnitude of r prime of t be equal to v so that I can stop writing that. So that's a, a nice simple substitution. But keep in mind, so every time I write v, it's really the magnitude of r prime. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stop writing the of t part because everything that we're dealing with now is a function of t. Um, so just understand that everything is of t, but like you'll drive yourself insane if you keep writing it. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do has just a very random start to it. So let's call it a random start. Uh, r prime, so the thing that we have here, where I said from number one, r prime is equal to basically v times t using this new notation we're using. Uh, so I'm gonna find r double prime. Like why am I doing that? You'll see, I don't know that you would come up with this on your own. So just use a product rule, right? First derivative of the second plus second derivative of the first. But remember v and v prime are not vectors. Um, r and r double prime are vectors. r prime and r double prime are vectors. Should be an arrow over that r double prime. I think it's the only one in the video that I'm gonna forget. We'll see. Uh, all right, so what I'm gonna do, for no apparent reason right now, I'm gonna find the cross product of r prime and r double prime. And so that, by just substitution, right, r prime is v t, and r double prime is this thing I found with the product rule. So we have this. Uh, and then if, uh, if you remember, uh, a cross product will distribute across addition. So we can rewrite this as vt cross vt prime plus vt plus cross tv prime. That was really hard to say. Okay, so now we wanna simplify this. Uh, keep in mind, v is just a scalar. So as I'm looking at this, that first cross product that I see. I have vt cross vt prime. I can factor a v out of both of those and get v squared and then t cross with t prime. And now the question is, what do I do with this second thing? Well, if you look at it, you see t crossed with t, right? I mean, it's v times t cross with uh, v prime times t, but v and v prime are just scalar. So really I'm doing t crossed with um, t. And if you cross a vector with itself, you actually always get the zero vector. So this part is just gonna give us a zero vector, which is really nice because we, we've now simplified down to this part. So we have v squared and then t cross with t prime. Okay, I'm gonna copy a lot of things to the next page. So uh, I'm gonna copy our given, I'm gonna copy what we uh, just worked out and I'm gonna change up our need to knows. So this was what we were given. From that, we have so far worked this out. From the need to know, well actually we also had uh, let v equal the magnitude of r prime. So this, this establishes everything that we know. Uh, from the need to knows, we had three things. The magnitude of t was equal to one, which is a constant. Uh, we know that the angle between t and t prime is pi over two because they're orthogonal. And we know that the magnitude of A cross B is magnitude A, magnitude B, sine of theta. So those three things are gonna be important here. All right, so uh, the reason, uh, so basically we're gonna use number six there on uh, t cross with t prime. So 
the magnitude, so I'm just taking magnitudes at this point, the magnitude of this is v squared, and now t cross with t prime, or the magnitude of t cross with t prime, is the magnitude of t, the magnitude of t prime, and then sine of the angle between them. But the angle between them is pi over two. And I know that uh, the magnitude of t is definitely one because it's a unit vector. And the sine of pi over two is one from the unit circle. Uh, so this actually just simplifies down to the magnitude of r prime cross with r double prime is v squared uh, times the magnitude of t prime. Okay, which is super useful. Why is that super useful? Well, uh, look at the thing that we were given up top, right? We were given this, and we know that uh, the magnitude of r prime is v. So I can rewrite that as the curvature is the magnitude of t prime over v, or the magnitude of t prime is equal to uh, v times the curvature. So I can go back to this thing I have, and I can replace the magnitude of t prime with v times the curvature. So the magnitude of r prime cross r double prime is going to be v squared times v times the curvature, which means uh, v cubed times the curvature. So from there, I can solve for the curvature. So the curvature is the magnitude of r prime cross with r double prime over uh, v cubed. But remember that uh, we said uh, v is the magnitude of r prime. So this all becomes the magnitude, of, so it's the magnitude of r prime cross with r double prime over the magnitude of r prime cubed. That's the formula that I end up using more often than not. It's the one that I find the easiest to remember. Um, and so there's two more that we're gonna work out from this for two dimensional things, but this is the one that I use all the time. Like I'm pretty comfortable taking cross products um, in the process of finding r prime, I can then find the magnitude of r prime. So that's the one that, that's kind of my go-to formula because um, I find you you know the material for that the most. But let's uh, keep going. So these we're gonna deal with two two-dimensional things. So we're given this and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say that r is uh, parameterized as x comma y comma zero. That's what makes it two-dimensional. So it's in the xy plane. And from there, I can calculate r prime is x prime, y prime, still zero. I can calculate r double prime, x double prime, y double prime, still zero. I can find the cross product of these. So if you think about it, the cross product is always um, normal to the plane that contains the vectors. So if your two vectors are in the xy plane, then their cross product has to go up along the z-axis or down along the negative z-axis, depending on how you cross them. Um, which is why I'm just gonna write this out, but the I component and J component both zero out. So all I really need is the K component, which is gonna give me the quantity X prime, Y double prime, minus Y prime, X double prime, K. So there's only a K component to that cross product, which means that its magnitude is actually just the absolute value of the coefficient of K. So it's just the absolute value of X prime, Y double prime, minus y prime, x double prime. Okay, and then uh, I also know because I had to find r prime. So that's why I was saying that like the formula at the top is kind of my go-to. I had to like find all these things anyway. So I might as well just remember that formula and then kind of like work it out. Not a big fan of memorizing a thousand formulas. Um, but I do know that the magnitude of r prime, because I had to find r prime, is square root of x prime squared plus y prime squared. Magnitudes of vector is a really important thing to be able to find. Um, and now if we just do substitution, so I'm gonna think of the, that magnitude, by the way, instead of radical uh, whatever, I'm gonna think of it as whatever to the one half, so that when I raise that to the third, I get whatever to the three halves. So if r is parameterized as x, y, zero, so a two-dimensional curve, then uh, the curvature is the absolute value of x prime, y double prime, minus y prime, x double prime, over uh, all of that. So the quantity x prime squared plus y prime squared to the three halves. So that's another way that we can find it. So that's pretty nice if, you, um, you know, if you're like writing a program or something that's gonna deal with 2D curves. 
uh, this is a pretty good uh, function to use. On the other hand, sometimes you are given uh, y equals f of x. So I'm going to say, I'm going to take uh, this formula we just found as our new given. So if we have a parameterization uh, x, y, 0, and we've worked out uh, that the curvature is this, there's this last formula that we're going to get. So if y is equal to f of x, and uh, so we can parameterize this, right? So if I just let, it's like the lamest parameterization, just let x equal t. So uh, r will be t, f of t, and still 0. Okay, so from there, I can find x prime, x double prime, y prime, y double prime. So x prime is 1, x double prime is 0, which is useful. Uh, y prime is just f prime, and y double prime is f double prime. Okay, and so that's of t. Um, so if we just directly substitute into our formula for curvature, we will get uh, the absolute value of 1 times f double prime minus 0 times f prime over uh, the quantity 1 squared plus f prime squared uh, to the 3 halves, which if we uh, simplify it, and then I'm going to change the variable back to x, uh, because x is equal to t, so t is equal to x. Uh, if we are given that y is equal to f of x, we can calculate the curvature, which is kind of fun to do. Um, it's, you can make some nice animations using this. Um, as the absolute value of the second derivative. So it's like curvature is a little, it, I mean, it's different from concavity. It feels related to concavity, um, but it, it's... Uh, it's like a more general concept and it also kind of captures the idea of like how fast is the curve curving a little bit better than concavity does um, because it's the absolute value of our concavity divided by this we seemingly weird thing but we just worked out where all of it came from uh, so we get that all right so I'm just gonna summarize we're basically done we got a lot of formulas here so our summary if you have an arc length parameterization which you almost never do but you could potentially then the curvature is the magnitude of um, dtds, so rate of change of the unit tangent vector with respect to arc length. But those are few and far between. So you're more likely um, to already have R of t and already have done a lot of cal calculations. If you've done that, then you might as well use the magnitude of t prime over r prime, the magnitude of r prime. But if you don't have that uh, and you just have r, then I think this is the ultimate formula that you should be using. Uh, magnitude of r prime cross with r double prime over the magnitude of r prime cubed. That's kind of the the main one that you're going to find yourself using a lot, I think. If you uh, choose to remember this and you have a 2D parameterized curve, uh, you can use this formula. And then if you just have y equals f of x, which you might, depending on when you're learning this kind of stuff, uh, if you just have a 2D function, then you can do the absolute value of f double prime over uh, that thing. All right, so. That's how all the formulas are related. It can look uh, really intimidating when you first encounter all these formulas, but uh, they're all the same formula. And then there's like some chain rule, some substitution, a lot of properties of vectors, uh, but you just move from one to the next to the next to the next. So I hope you found this uh, helpful and good luck.